Thank you so much, Lord. That was a fantastic interview. Rika, what a fantastic performance and a great interview candidate, I have to say. The welcome to a job. Now, I <laughs> wish we could spend more time talking about that result, especially with so many people expecting Vitality to win. But I do need to move us on to SK Gaming versus Rogue. As we're meeting all of our teams for the first time this year, let's talk a little bit about SK Gaming and the matchup in the bottom lane. We're, of course, seeing the reunition of two former teammates. I think a lot of people have been waiting to see Treats back in the bot lane again. And for once, it's SK that doesn't lack an identity. I think last spring, or last yeah, through the entirety of last year, it felt like I, there was no identity. Swapping players left, right, and center. Here's a coach. Now you're jungled. Back to support. All right, let's finally see what you can do now. And I finally see a strong side for SK as well, because the, for the longest time, they have been this kind of team that have been dwelling up close to playoffs, not in playoffs, yeah. with this strong point now to play for with, uh, with Jesu, with Treats. I finally see a way for SK where they can find a driving factor for the rest of the team to kind of uh, huddle on. And then from there, that's when we're looking for a kind of champions to play for. I mean, I really love that point you just mentioned. SK have been this team that you could almost call the gatekeepers. This is a squad that finishes between fifth and seventh place. They have regularly kept other teams out of playoffs, but not really been able to challenge for the top. It's going to be interesting to see how the roster performs this year. And of course, a lot of expectations and pressure on treats. Let's turn our attention to Rogue's bottom lane because early on ready check, you're talking about Hans Summer. He's now left yeah. the roster and that will be a difficult hole to fill for Rogue. You know what, but plus one Greek and I'm Greek, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> I mean, Comp uh, was in Vitality. Yes, he did great, but have we seen his true, true potential? Now we can in a team like Rogue who he doesn't have really small shoes to fill. Goldborg, how difficult will this be for Comp? I don't honestly see this as a difficulty for Comp. Okay. When Comp was stopped out in the beginning, I don't. I genuinely don't think he was the problem. It was a team that was completely disjointed, uh, collapsed, both with stopping out top laner, back with Skeens, Mili Mi Milita back then, and they just needed a leader, which is why Crownshot was brought in at that point. I think Comp is back. I think he has the level. I don't think there's too much pressure on him. Obviously, he's a bit rusty after not being in the LEC, but I still expect this player to perform. Yeah, absolutely the case. And I think when I look at Rogue, earlier today in Ready Check, we were talking about teams and structures, who can coach their players, who can bring them up. Rogue has a history of finding and promoting good ERL talent. I mean, they were one of the first truly successful LEC organizations to take advantage of that ecosystem. Now, there's been some changes, obviously, when you look at the likes of Auto One, they're moving in there last year. And now, all of a sudden, Malrung coming in. Georgia, I'm going to throw it to you to give us a deeper dive as Inspired was a pivotal part of Rogue's success. And while we're wondering what Mullering is going to bring to the table, you've got to enlighten us. Absolutely. Well, for everyone, every LEC fan who is not watching the LCK, first of all, you should. Secondly, if you haven't, let me help you. I'm here to break down what Malran can bring in Rogue. Malran was the sub jungler for the legendary Damwon Kia in 2021, where he had the chance to work alongside arguably the best jungler in the world for the last two years, Kanye. During LCK Summer 2021, he's played 10 games when DK rolls swap Canyon to mid and Showmaker to bot, going 7 and 3 in those matches. Now, if we look at the two players, Inspired leaving El Marra Kamin, stylistically, he plays a very similar game to Inspire, with not only similar stats in the early game, but also champion pool wise. Now, Malrang seems to be favoring his AP champions a little bit more, and now with the rise of priority in Diana, which we also saw in the previous game, things could get spicy. He recently mentioned, of course, in an interview with Ashley Kang, that he has always wanted to play in EU due to the creative pathings by our junglers. He's also not worried about the environmental change, since, as he said, and a lot of us gamers do, he doesn't really go out. Now, I have brought a clip up for you guys, and talking about creative and aggressive pathing, I wanted to showcase what Malran can bring into the LEC that maybe we haven't necessarily really seen before. So, just to give you a little bit of context about this clip that I'm about to show you, it is a typical good Xin Zhao day. He's starting red side because of that top lane matchup, Renekton versus Gwen. Gwen with TP and Ignite, meaning no flash, has to push in early against the Renekton, meaning that Malrang has to absolutely help his top laner survive the matchup early on. So, as I'm going to play that, you would think, 
maybe buff to buff to grom to level three to a gank towards the top side, but that's not the case. Malrank will sprint it up top, and here's where things get interesting. There is obviously a ward place in the river, very cleverly by the Gwen, and what Malrank will do is that he will notice the Gwen going towards her tower, meaning that he has been spotted and he will enter enemy territory. What does that do? It puts Rumble in a lot of trouble because he doesn't know where the Zinzao is. Now, what Rumble will do is he will try to cautiously enter his jungle and look for where the Zinzao is. And if I get the minimap higher, you will see that he makes a whole circle around his red buff, trying to figure out where the enemy jungler is. Now, of course, Malrank will return into his jungle. He will try to take down the second buff. He will go for the Gromp. He'll try to get that level three, which is very crucial. But what does he do? He goes straight back to the top lane. Remember, this is the matchup that he wanted to help his Renekton with. He completely evades the Rumble. And once he's up top, it's a pretty easy kill for him and his top laner. So not only that, once this one goes down, you see that Rumble tries to come in to help his top lane. His top lane is already dead. So what happens here is they'll kill the top laner. Wave state is absolutely fantastic for Khan. They will take the flash off of the jungler. And also, if I pause it right here, there's also the teleport from the Gwen that's already come in. And the wave of the state is really bad, meaning that the Rumble will go both sides and that Gwen is screwed. So all in all, Malran could have made the more predictable play, but he didn't, and it worked out for him. Now, right before we head into the champ select, I'm going to leave you with Malrang's own quote. Brother Larson, let's break Europe together. Dracos and Kedro, take it away. Thank you so much, Trouble, for that wonderful breakdown. Hopefully we get to see more unconventional pathing from Malrang today. Kedro, you talked about it already because you've, uh, you've seen what this man can unleash on a solo queue ladder, just like we saw in that LCK game. He's yep. not to be messed with. Does that translate to playing on Rogue? That's what we're here to find out. Well, Malrang has played away from home quite a few times. He played in Turkey, I believe. He's got a TCL title and things like this on Royal Bandit. So a lot of times when you have an import, he can have, you know, he can be homesick or maybe there's a lot of communication issues. But I was speaking to Otto Amne and he said, Malrang's English is not that bad. It's pretty, you know, feasible. He's, he was away for a year, so he compared it to Ryu. He said, Malrang's English is the same as Ryu's English after one year of learning it. So that's a pretty good start. And when he came to Europe, he was playing around two weeks of solo queue in the preseason. He went from a right account unranked to I think like 1.2 thousand LP uh, with like a 75% win rate in just under two weeks so when I saw this I was like well uh, he's pretty good <laughs> I thought you were gonna give me more you're kind of like you like built me up and you're like yeah he's a uh, yeah I was trying to find an adjective uh, but pretty good was, was what I came up with he's I we're gonna see how all right yeah. he is up against SK SK of course with the jungler who is a jungler an exciting change Already? of pace for the team. Gilius, the legend himself, god of Lee Sin, see what the dive rolls this time and see if we can think of any new content for Gilius as we've probably beat that horse dead a few times over. But it is time for SK Gaming versus Rogue, two teams we expect to see have brand new identities on the LEC stage as we head into picks and bands for the second game of the day. Let's see what the priority is. I think standouts again, TF. Renekton, Lee Sin, LeBlanc, Ka Kalista is banned away. Okay, we remember Jezu treats with the Kalista Jarvan along those lines. So taking that off the board instantly, you can see Jezu on your screen on the left there, smiling a bit, yeah, banning my Kalista. Um, not so much seen in pro play at all, really. It's more so Jin, Jinx, Aphelios, Caitlyn. Uh, so interesting ban there from Rogue. Yeah, it definitely feels a little bit odd, but obviously it probably knows a little bit more than we do, given what could be going around in scrims. And aggressive AD carries in general do seem to be the focus here. A little bit surprised by that one, but overall, again, when you look at SK Gaming as a whole, as a roster, I think the single lane you have to be the most scared of is Jezu and Treats, based on what they were able to show us in spring. A very lethal duo when they're set up with those kill lanes. So two picks set up for Rogue just to deny them any kind of aggressive boss side. Yeah, but Jin is still up, Aphelios is still up, Jinx is still up, so it's not like they're going to be struggling with AD carry picks. I imagine Jezo can easily play these champs, probably been picked in scrims. What's the last ban here? Is Renekton going to go through the draft? I imagine if it does, Rogue's going to snatch that up instantly. If they do decide to ban away Renekton, no, they don't. Thresh taken away. Another game in EU where Thresh is banned on three on red side. I wonder if that has anything to do with Javan. We haven't seen it just yet, but expecting Rogue to go for a Renekton here, unless they want to pivot and go for a Jinx. 
certainly like to see it without the Thresh pairing. It is a little bit weaker overall. Now we have the Trinvir Hover. It's a real pick now, folks, just like it was at Worlds. But seeing it blind here would be a bit surprising. Question, what's going to be your response from SK Gaming? Camille, solid top lane blind pick for Gen X. Got very comfortable last season getting the counter pick. And instead, it looks like we're just going to have a safe jungle option for Gilius. As you highlighted, though, Treats did play at support last year. So yeah. there is always the flex potential when you look at SK and this J4 pick. Yeah, Treats has quite a deep champion pool. Easily can pick up the Jarvan. I wonder if the Thresh ban is because of the Jarvan, but that's picked up. I expect AD carry here, probably a Philios for Comp. Uh, Jezu, sorry, I imagine. Jinx picked up, maybe match it with a Philios. Caitlyn's down, Lucian's down. But no, they're going to go for Leona. So picking Leona here opens up Jin on third pick if you want to. Uh, and, well, no, they're just going to pick on Jin now instead. So maybe waiting for Leona on three. Counter pick spot is always good. Um, expecting Rogue maybe matching jungle here would be great. Support, Xin Zhao, all the classic champions being played across the world. Yeah, and of course, with Jarvan taken away, at least off the board, Xin Zhao is simply next on the list for priority Ooh. 80 junglers. LeBlanc getting picked up here is big. It's a champion that's seen a lot of bans, has seen a little bit of play as well internationally, but overall, as always, LeBlanc, super powerful champion, high agency, can get a lot done if she gets rolling. Yeah, the important thing about this early rotation LeBlanc is it's against the Jarvan. And uh, as a jungle main myself, playing Jarvan into LeBlanc is not fun. It is an absolute horror. So good pick up there by Larson. But we've got Vex now locked in for Certus. I love to see it. And frankly, into any matchup where a champion has multiple dashes, you're going to get a lot of value out of that passive. The fear setup as well potentially gives you a small, small window of opportunity where you can lock someone down, especially when you have as much CC as a Vex and J4 do together. That said, heading into second band, so Lulu already taken off the board, not going to allow Rogue to have any kind of hyper carry strategy limiting the range support options. Yeah, Vex pick definitely good into the LeBlanc. Still decent kill pressure with Sin Zhao, though, if the chains do connect. So I have to be very wary of that mid jungle 2 2. A lot of kill pressure. Not so much on the Vex, maybe, but on the Jarvan. A lot of people see mid laners like Lissandra into LeBlanc. And they're like, well, Lissandra. The setup on the Sandra is going to be very difficult. It's very good kind of tools to shut down the gank setup from LeBlanc, but they can always go on your jungler as well. So instead of actually going for the mid, they can push in the wave and move. And the 2v2 is still in their favor if they target the jungler. Did a Poro just get knocked off there? Poor Poro. Poro's collateral damage in the LEC, <laughs> sad to say, is now we might see a Diana locked in. Would be double AP, and it would mean that we're getting a flex on the J4. But we're going to wait, we're going to hold our breath, and we're going to see what does actually end up getting locked in right now. SK Gaming with an immense amount of setup. The Jin, the Vex, the Nautilus, the J4, there is so much CC jam-packed <gasps> There it is, Dracos, team. on the floor. Did you see it? The Paro? <laughs> it got knocked off. Oh, no. It's okay, back to reality. Um, Nautilus pick is great into the LeBlanc. I just shed a tear there. Um, of course, when you drop the ultimate on the LeBlanc, she can't really avoid it, no matter what. Uh, it's going to hunt her down, and it does make her life a bit of a pain, because when you think of LeBlanc, W forwards, Q, R, E or something, get a burst before the team fight. but now this R will hunt her down, and you can actually follow up and chase her. But Oren picked up for Oda Wamne, tank top. Now they're going to round out their comp with a support, you imagine. Um, in the eastern regions, we're seeing a lot of range supports. We're seeing Karma first pick from T1. They're running uh, Karma lanes. We're seeing Lux lanes. We're seeing Yumi lanes. We even saw a Sona lane. Uh, but EU still sticking to engage supports. Looks like Braum is going to be the round out here for Rogue. Good matchup into the Nautilus, of course. But no, Rakan for the team fight. And Kdrop, looking at it right now, SK Gaming, if they fall behind, they're going to have a very hard time killing this Ornn. The Jin, the Vex, a lot of burst damage, but not a lot of sustained DPS against someone as tanky as an Ornn. A GP lock-in would make that a lot easier, but scaling on the top side would be the name of the game. Would love to see the Gwen come in here as well, but well, SK have a ton of setup. They don't have maybe one of the more traditional hyper carry options like the Jinx on the side of Rogue. So have to see how they can actually execute in this early game with the sheer amount of setup that they do have and maybe find an early advantage. Pali Pali, Gwen picked up there for Gen X. Of course, top matchup will always be in Gwen's favor. Will win out on side lane, will win trades. Maybe he's going to go for the TP Ignite, uh, of course. But I mean, both comps quite easy to dissect. Rogue, full team fight comp. Jinx, Rakan, Orin, those are the three champions you need to look at. Sin Zao LeBlanc, very explosive single target damage champions. Good gank setup, very good mid jungle 2v2. Over on the side of SK, really good engage, right? Jarvan ult with a Jin ult, with a Vex ult, a lot of good follow up. Gwen as well for the dive. So their target is definitely going to be comp. If comp falls, I think SK can start to get the resets on Gwen and start to move forwards. Oh, on Gwen, on Vex, sorry. Yeah, a lot of potential to do damage, a lot of potential CC as Rogue and SK are gearing up to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. 
Have to see what the execution is going to look like in the early game for SK. Again, they have the tools. Can they make it work? Because on the opposite side for Rogue, a lot of flexibility in terms of what a Rakan can do. And Orn, certainly the later we go, the more oppressive that champion is going to feel, especially against an immobile champion like the Jin. But it's time. Rogue versus SK. We are again, but this time, Kadrel, we have a different new champion. We got Akshan last time. We're gonna get Vex this time. We heard from Vedius. Vexius. Uh, Vexius. We heard a lot That's of things early in the day. It was kind of, it was a little too edgy for me, to be completely honest. But <laughs> the champion fears people. She does pretty good damage, and she's not hyper mobile. And certainly she's good not until champs. level six. Good into she's dash good at the champions that can dash and very good follow up with the ultimate, of course. So we'll keep our, our eye on Vex. Uh, we saw Faker in the LCK play Vex today. Had a fantastic game. I think Faker has been spamming so much Vex in solo queue. A lot of mid laners. Scout also played him. Um, a lot of mid laners. Big fan of the she's champ. She's 6 0 in the LFL as well. So is looking like very much a power pick right now. Um, Obviously still a relatively new champion in the grand scheme of things, so we'll see if teams have really fully figured out how to leverage her. But no Predator this time around, as it was for Scout, instead going for the Electrocute, so more damage for Surtis there in the mid lane. And Kedro, I kind of want to focus in on bot lane for a brief moment here, because we got very used to Rogue being this hyper-dominant bot lane with Hansama last season. Comp now coming in, big shoes to fill, and going up against Jezu and Traits, who were very successful in spring as a bot lane overall, but then obviously had an untimely summer and now kind of gauging where both these teams are at in terms of, uh, or lanes are at rather, in terms of strength. Yeah, definitely hard to grasp because obviously, like you said, haven't seen Jezu and Treats for a while. Comp has returned to the LEC and Rogue already picking up the Auron tells me they're going to play for mid bot. Expecting Malrang to hover around mid a lot of the time and try to hover down towards his bot side. Not so much of a lane kingdom lane that they're playing for. Not so much like a Lucian Nami or a Caitlyn Lux. Jinx Rakan more suited for team fights. So I think SK is slightly favored in the 2v2. Gilius also pathing down there. Has gone for red Raptors into Grom. So he'll get level 3 after that. But I believe the pinks coming out on him means he's been spotted because of the ward in the entrance. Raptors spot him on the second camp. And very crucial that they can't track the Jarvan in the early game if he gets rolling. Very powerful champion, very solid setup, especially when you could potentially be ganking a Nautilus Jin lane. Meanwhile, on the top side of the map, Oduwamne kind of struggling as is to be expected. Gwen with the early push. And also, knowing that J4 is pathing away, maybe makes things a bit more difficult. But with Zinzao on the bottom side too, Oduwamne is just going to have to suffer here a little bit on the top side of the map. Yeah, Gillis will get spotted out now into River. Malrank just finished his red. Doesn't take the sweeper plan because that lets Gilius know that he's there and said Malrank's just gonna match this bot play. We might have a 3v3 already. TPs cannot come in, remember. Hook. Trait's now gonna get locked up. Chain CC immediately coming out. Combat just get one shot before he can even do anything. Now it's a 3v2. Malrank maybe wants to try to trade something back, but instead, just using the third auto there and going to walk away. I think big mistake there from Comp. They knew the setup was coming in. They knew Jarvan was in the bush. He just gets hit by a hook. EQ from Gilius, and he's dead. As simple as that. I think if he flashed the hook, made Treats hit the wall, then Malrang could follow up, and Rogue might have been able to turn that. But they had the information. They just weren't able to use it. Yep. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Surta is getting some very favorable trades overall. Remember, again, each time LeBlanc leaps in, she's going to get marked to take extra damage from Vex autos. And additionally, Vex can just push W. It's basically the same as the Lissandra W, that snare. Instead, it's going to be a fear. Anytime you see that red bar full, Surtis is going to be ready to punish. Wow, Larson really struggling here. Can't even pick up those ranged creeps. Too scared to walk up in case the fear does connect and he gets bursted down. He's going to base her in the end. Uh, so we get the replay of this. They had full information that Gilius was here. They saw him work, walking down. Malrang pings him. Doesn't take the sweeping plant on purpose because he wants to match his gank without SK knowing. And then Comp just kind of gets hit by a hook. Gilius walks up and hits an EQ. No flash is even used and he just simply dies. Flashes away, dies to the red buff of Gilius, I believe, with Ignite ticking as well. And then Rogue can't really turn the play. Yeah, normally I would love to give credit to the SK bottom side of the map alongside Gilius for really pulling off an excellent play there. And while it was good, Rogue had all the tools to walk away. 
but instead opted not to, so a little bit questionable overall. Could have called it a bait if they came out on top in kills. We would have called it Big Brain, but instead just looking a little bit foolish there on the bottom side of the map. Good news, Comp, while he does not have an assist like Jezu does, he does have a little bit more in terms of CS overall. So not too bad at this point in the game, but giving Jarvan early kills can be very dangerous. Yeah, both junglers cycling through their bases now. Giri is going to be able to pick up the Iron Spike whip because of the first blood. Marwan going to have to settle for the pickaxe. And they're both moving out towards the bot side once again. Comp has no flash, crucially. So he is very, very vulnerable in this bot side. When you're up against the Nautilus and the Jarvan with flash, they have so much point and click engage. Flash hook, flash root, flash EQ from Jarvan. There's so many things he has to be careful of because they also have great follow-up from the Jin W. So Marang's going to have to cover this lane, walk through, get as much vision as possible, try to spot out Gilead as much as possible so that his bot lane can keep up this push. Yep. Good news, of course, on the top side of the map is that uh, Odo Wamane on the bounce back on that wave was able to push Genex out and force his teleport. Now Odo, of course, cannot TP to the wave, could TP to the tower and will opt to do so. So at the end of the day, it is just an even trade, but taking away that summoner spell. And remember, at this point in the game, not nearly as relevant as it once was. We have to wait till much later if we are going to see TPs coming to towers, but the advantage, the cooldown is much lower. Gilius now hovering around mid will get a little bit for Surtis, who takes a unfavorable trade there. Electrocute proking from Larson, and you can see how the LeBlanc wants to play the matchup. Instead of Wing on top of the Vex, where the Fear will come in, Ws to the side, lands the EQ, and that's how the trade pattern works for the LeBlanc. Never really want to fully commit to the W on top of the Vex, because then, of course, you'll get feared and you'll lose the trade. So, yep. smart play there by Larson, will end up catching this wave. Gilius. That's the second time he runs through mid, helps Ceratus gets the push, and now moves down towards the bot side. They're going to start up this Drake because his mid laner has the pushing wave. Can be there first. We'll see if Malrang wants to contest because Larson's caught the wave. He can move if he wants. Trim is around. Certainly difficult to do so, though. Malrang has to be careful. That is a level 6 Vex alongside a J4. A lot of burst, and Malrang does not have access to the ultimate quite yet. Can stick around and fish for the 50-50 if he wants to, but Surtas sitting there with fear up and available on the Doom and Gloom passive means that he will walk away and SK will grab the first dragon of the game. Yeah, bot lane moving first there. SK have to bot push, they have to mid push because Gilly has secured it. Easy dragon for him. He's going to base, go towards his top camps. Herald spawning in a minute. We'll see if Treats wants to base or run towards the top side of the map to help his team secure that because SK in the early game look very decisive. Rogue opting against that dragon and base is coming in from Larson once again. And we wanted to kind of see, again, what the identity of Rogue was going to look like this year. Last year, it was all about lane dominance across three lanes, transitioning from clean early games into okay and sometimes shaky mid games, admittedly, but usually a team that won a ton in the regular season. Now with two new players, have to see what the adjustment looks like. Oduwamne is certainly not set up to dominate in the lane with this Ornn, but he's still doing some good work on it. Has a CS advantage on the top side of the map, and. Later we go. Again, those Ornn items, the Masterwork items, are going to be huge for the side of the team. So, at least a positive point overall for Rogue there. Yeah, I think Rogue's offseason was an incredibly tough one. It's almost like damage mitigation, right? When you lose the MVP and probably by far your best performing player at Worlds, both of them are gone. Can you really find players to replace that caliber of player? No. They opted to go for Malrang as the substitute for Damwon. Incredibly good jungler had a couple of games on stage with Damwon when they were doing their role swap shenanigans, has been able to watch Damwon after they win Worlds and Scrim, so probably learned a lot as well, uh, and then going for a comp in the AD carry role. We'll see how it pans out, but for now it looks like they're playing more so towards mid. Larson did pass his control mid, hang on, Larson feared now. Connecting the fear, Gilius waiting on his combo, is going to go in, locked him down by Malrang, he's gonna ult out, Trimby's still fine though, Gilius definitely not the sequence of events he wanted to happen, the lock through not gonna come in as Gilius does flash out to safety. Flame Chompers won't connect. Bit of a comedy of errors there, but ultimately both sides walking away unscathed. Rogue, though, pushing the mid lane and now access on the Herald. Yeah, that should be a free Herald for them. The Jarvan can't walk up. No smite against the Norn with no flash as well. No ult. Gilius cannot really walk up and contest this. SK's bot lane is around, so they might try to get a little bit of vision, but I don't think there's a world where they can contest. But as I say that, they start to move towards the objective. Gen X is in base. I think Treat's going to spot this out. And Larson is holding the line for now. Surtus, got the Shadow Surge up and available, available. can uh, do a little Gengar action there into the backside if he wants to, but <laughs> gonna opt to walk, I guess I shouldn't talk about Pokemon, they have a MOBA now, I should, you know, I should, okay, right, I'll, I'll hold that. back, Let's yeah, drop that. we'll drop that, drop that, we're not, go back to Dragon Ball Z, that's where we belong, <laughs> in the comfort zone, MOBA free zone, folks, alright, Rogue, 
this stage of the game. I mean, the gold is dead even. It's very close overall. I'm kind of keeping my eyes on the Vex to see what she can do. Level 6, normally we expect to see a little bit more activity. But after those initial plays, SK has slowed down a little bit. And certainly, with an Ornn and a Jinx on your team, you have to feel like the longer this game goes, the more favored Rogue are going to be overall. Yeah, SK could, it, might, it looked a bit weird there because SK was hanging around the Herald for so long even though they had no intention of contesting it whatsoever. But the good thing for them was bot wave was pushing into them. It was stacking. So Comp was sitting mid, Jezu was sitting mid, but they knew that this massive bot wave would stack. Jezu would be able to go catch it and then they can cross map bot plates for top plates because they can't really answer. If they were to sit under the tower as their bot lane here, they'd have to back off. They'd get dropped on Herald uh, and they'd lose out on the play. So at least now they can find some plates on the other side of the map. Gen X will have to back off eventually when Rogue members show. Herald comes in. All gold funneled towards comp, and we're going to see a lot of trades here. Yeah. Downside is Jin not really great at taking tower plates, so Rogue will at least even out the gold overall here as they break this tower, funneling into comp as you said that they would. Jinx just going to get stronger and stronger, but only two plates on the bottom side for Jezu and Treats as Odawamne can very easily hold this wave. That said, 66 health on the Herald. You have to feel like Genix is going to snipe that one crash? out before the charge comes Ooh, in. 23 to... health! Oh, Shelly's getting this! Oh, there it is. You got to force okay. out the needlework. Genix, stone cold killer. Waited till he saw the whites of Shelly's eyes before he threw that one out. And well yeah. played. I was I was nervous there for a second, Cadrill. Rogue might have been fancying a tier two if that Shelly did connect. But on the other side of the map, Odoamne just walked up, cleared the wave in SK's face, and said, Go on, then dive me. I think SK don't really have the damage to dive a full kind of tank Orn right now. Too much health, too much armor MR. Fear is going to connect on to Larson. And that'll Solid. be the electrocute procced. Jezu now has the Gale Force, but Jin not a very good tank killer. So we'll keep yeah. around that as the game progresses. And Zerta is very comfortable in this matchup, lining up his skills and combos very well. That said, Larson looking a little bit like a fish out of water in this one, taking a lot of skills. And of course, this matchup, generally not great for LeBlanc, because she's a very dash reliant champion, but Zerta is certainly looking a lot more comfortable. Yeah, every time the camera kind of pans towards mid, it's either Gilly is helping Surtis push yeah, yeah. out or Surtis winning <laughs> out on the trades. We could, so. and I also, this could be a caster bias, Kadron, that like maybe we just have not panned over when Larson has gotten a good trade. We've just happened to see a lot of not great uh -oh. trades from Gilius. Larson and Comp. This might be the worst trade deal in history. No if Gilius gets taken down in an instant, it's a clean counter gank coming in from Malrong. Comp, happy to have that kill. Yeah, Malrang reading the map like a book. Reading Gilius like a book there. Read the play very well, countered the gank, and Gilius' intention there was just to EQR onto comp, get his flash, back off, and maybe start Drake. And then the next follow-up would be Treats, who would flash off the Jinx with no flash. That was the intention. It didn't work out because when Gilius commits, he sees a Sinzao. He has nothing to escape. And of course, they win out on the 3v3. They're going to get themselves this dragon as well. We'll see what soul it is. I want to see one of the new souls. I want to see a chem tech. I want to see a hex tech. And we're going to get a mountain. <sighs> At least it's not a chemtech. I think everyone, the collective sigh of relief. Actually, I would actually like to watch chem. I'll just say, like most people, I'm not the biggest fan of playing into it, but yeah, watching it, I think... It's not no. fun. No. But if, if we're watching it, I don't mind too much. Yeah. You know, it's the, running it's around a, and stuff. It's a Drake meant for the spectators of League of Legends. But that's then I know I'm going to queue up tonight and get a Chemtech soul and lose my mind. Yeah, that's true. That's what That would the, be how the caster curse works, my friend. You would uh, be dooming yourself there. It is what it is. It do be like that. <laughs> Certainly does sometimes. And uh, SK, despite a very promising early start in this game and some small CS leads here in both top lane, uh, jungle, and bot lane, they're not really holding on to a gold lead. 600 in favor of Rogue from that first Herald. Breaking a tower as well makes the map a lot easier to play. While Larson is struggling a bit in the mid lane match, he's staying even in CS, and SK have not been able to snowball any of their early advantages. This matchup does look rough, though. Yeah, Larson is a little bit up in CS. Did lose a couple plates. Second one is soon to fall. Um, but it's a very even game overall. But just looking forwards, the Orn is going to be very difficult for SK to take down. We talked about it in draft. SK's comp, full dive, Vex, Jarvan, Gwen, Nautilus, all trying to find comp with a Jinult behind them. Uh, Larson probably wants to pick off those members before they can do so. Marang disengaging. There's old Trimby CCing to peel. And the second comp gets a reset, they can start to move forward. But if Surtis gets a kill onto comp and he gets a reset, Rogue will fall apart. So that's how the team fights should break down. Uh, but I think we're a little bit, uh, a bit a long way away from team fights. We're gonna have to wait for another dragon or so. I completely agree, Cajun. We're only 14 minutes in, and again, only about 500 gold difference between these teams, but I think it is a good thing to point out. On the opposite side, Malrong, if he gets too far ahead, it's going to be really hard for them to kill this Zin. That ultimate so incredibly powerful against a champion like Vex, against a champion like Jin. If they want to do damage to that Zin Zhao, really going to have to commit 
uh, the Vex is going to have to be willing to go in with the Shadow Surge, which is a difficult proposition. So execution, again, often as it is, the name of the game for SK. You need to find these quick picks, have the tools to do so, but they're a little sloppy on the engage there. Rogue have more than enough tools to pick them apart. Yeah, Rogue's objective on the map right now is bot tier one. They're trying to find some bot side vision. And there will be, oh, it is 14 minutes, 45 seconds. You know what that means, Rekos? Unleashed no. teleport is available. <laughs> so now top laners can TP two wards and creep. So we might see a five man <laughs> bot fight. Certus has TP to match Larson's <laughs> roams. I feel like a bad caster because that's obviously what the answer should have been. But I thought you were like preparing me for some juicy meme that I just completely missed. No, no, I got some memes in the pocket, though, so stand by. Uh, I'll see I'm if ready. I can bust them out, depending on how this game goes. Ready and waiting, Captain. All right. Ready. All this means Unleashed Teleport is it's back to normal teleport, but the cooldown is lower functionally, which means we could see a lot more map play, which is going to be very big when you have a champion like LeBlanc on the Rift. That said, Larson has to be careful here. More than enough tools to get away, and SK not going to overcommit to this one. Second Herald, not as important as First Herald, or that at least that used to be the knowledge, but with Tier 2s being so incredibly valuable, Still an objective worth fighting over, as you can see SK commit a lot of resources. Yeah, second Herald notoriously good for taking down mid-tier 1 or uh, side lane tier 2s. So if mid-tier 1's already dead, it's used on top or bot tier 2. If it's not, it's always used on mid-tier 1. Um, so now SK is going to start that one up. Looking at Comp and Marang's position, they are going to give that one up. Rogue's going to fence themselves a bot tier 1. They already have first tower top. They're going to get this side lane tower, and maybe SK want to force something of their own in mid. Larson does clear out the way for now, and with one minute on Dragon, Rogue are probably going to keep this bot side control. We'll see if SK can retake it. Yep. Gilly's going to grab this one. Comp just continuing to push. This is the threat of the Jinx. Left alone on this tower, you can already see Kraken Slayer on top of the Zeal, and the double dagger is just going to eviscerate that tower. But SK going to focus on breaking down mid. You said it, second Herald. Obviously a very solid use for it. Odo Wamne in the area could fish for an ult, but Ooh. very difficult. Are they going to go for this one immediately? Malrang now going in. Ulti comes out to mitigate any potential fall of damage. It's big! Coming in with the Odo Wamne ultimate. Genex now leaping onto the backside. Trivia going to be in trouble. The knockup comes in from Odo Wamne. Malrang trying Ooh. with the fancy footwork to get out, but from downtown comes the sniper. Jezu going to land the shot that matters. The rest of the rogue has to turn tail and run. Messy exchange in the mid lane. The tier one still dropping in favor of SK. Yeah, two snipers on either side. Comp manages to pick up Gilius with the rocket, and Jezu finds the last shot onto Malrang. Two members fall, both the junglers of either team, and slightly con confusing engage there from Rogue. They engage 4v5 while Comp is pushing out bot. Genex TPs in, so it turns into a 5v4 in favor of SK, but Comp arrives in time to snipe one off. I wonder if Malrang wants to engage there because his side waves are pushing, and even if they lose this fight, SK will lose creeps on side lanes because comp crashed the wave. I wonder if there was some kind of thought process there of, well, the wave's in a good state, let's fight anyway. And if the fight's extended, comp will arrive soon. We'll see the replay, I believe, but Dragon is Larson. up. So both teams aren't done here just yet. TP from Certus. Larson, you can see maybe trying to cancel the bait base there. Unfortunately, the Ethereal Chain's gonna connect on the Grof. Trimby has to be careful. Gilius not afraid, gonna leap forward. Treats finds the lockup. All of Rogue, though, focusing oh, their damage. Larson. Larson leaping into the backside is gonna be big. Certus, Doom and Gloom now up and available. Looking for that massive, massive fear if he can find it. Pillar gonna disrupt there a little bit from the Orin Q. Is Larson still fishing for a way into the backside? Both sides backing away. Clear that both teams know how much is at stake in this fight. Just a dragon, yes. With so many members in the area, if it breaks out to a major kill advantage, we could see a massive lead for one side. Genix now stepping forward. Treats going to go wide on the hook. 16, 1400. Dragon getting lower. Now the fight is breaking reset. out. 1400. Who is going to get it? Jinx finding the reset immediately. Comp now trying to shred through. They're going to grab the dragon. Genix now going to be in trouble. SK getting set up to be eviscerated, but it's Sirtus on the backside. Comp. Going for a few more kills. Double kill for Malrang. Jezu and Sirtus backing away. Massive, massive fight for Rogue. Oh, the is in trouble here. Jezu has no flash, though. Malrang's here to cover off his top laner. Malrang had smite that entire time, but it's Comp who secures it. He was free hitting in the back line, doing so much damage. Jezu has ult up in a second. Maybe he wants to try to snipe out Odwamna. Here it comes. No flash. He's the wall. Oh, he's, he's missing wall. every bullet, Dracos. He now. can't see anything. Oh, oh man. Odoamne doing his best Neo impression, I guess, if we want to be favorable on that one. Just kind of walks away slowly, veers slowly to the left.
put eyes on Comp in this replay because Larson is buying time, but Comp just hits the dragon. Gilius goes way too deep here, EQing in and just gives Comp a free reset. Malrang has smite the whole time, but Comp is the one to just secure it because Malrang pops the stopwatch. And as I'm looking at Comp with another reset, he takes down Gen X as well. Double kill for the Jinx. He's just mowing them down and SK managed to land the fear onto him to stop the engage, to stop the follow up, and they managed to get out. But a horrific team fight for them, three for one in the favor of Rogue as well as a dragon. And again, very positive signs for Rogue and that Comp and Malrang are doing exceptionally well. And important to highlight, Malrang, I believe, used the Xin Zhao ult to cancel the EQ from Gilius in that fight. Would have been certainly a much harder fight for Comp if he had a Jarvan yep. on top of him at the start. But a clean cancel from Malrang means it's pretty easy for them to play out the rest of that one. SK need to find the uh, connection with a lot of these initial cooldowns so these fights can continue to turn against them. And Orin now level 12. Master Rogue items about to start coming through. The gold discrepancy only going to grow in terms of effective gold. Yeah, two tier ones on side lane down for the side of Rogue. The last one standing in this mid tower. I think Larson is going to try to push out top, move towards mid, and maybe they can pressure this. Jesu no flash means Otto Amne's ult should connect. And if Larson's in a good spot, maybe he can follow up and take Jin out of the fight before it even starts. Four men strong towards mid. Certus getting blue buff from Gilius there will catch bot wave. And it's just going to be a slow and steady setup for Rogue for now. And again, I just want to go back happy for comp in this game. Started rough, went down in a very telegraphed gank. Now three, one, and two, 500 gold shut down, more than 10 CS per minute. On top of that, two and a half items built. This man is set up to carry this game. Excellent opportunity in a first game to show off what he's made of, especially when he's stepping into the shoes of a player at the caliber of Han Sama. 100%, and Rogue is just playing so well around him. The draft is revolting around the Jinx. Larson is kind of like uh, the wild card of the draft, where he's playing for himself past the early game. He's doing his own shenanigans in teamfights while Trimby, Malrang, Odoamne, all three of them are just there to peel for the Jinx. Stop this dive, stop Surtis from getting onto him. Try to disengage as much on this Jarvan so that Comp can free hit. And there's the mid tier one. Was about to fall, but Comp couldn't get the last auto attack in. A little bit scared of Gilius. Still has flash, so has some kind of self-peel, but building towards three items so far, we know what a late game Jinx can do. We certainly do. We saw it in the final episode of Arcane. Oh yeah, Almost. we did. Almost kind of saw it. Well, we you saw know, parts of my, it. Here's my theory for season two. No, yes, no, no. comes out and wind wolves it. <laughs> no, no, what? No, no, seriously. How You're not cool allowed anywhere near any scripts ever again. Well, how cool would that, so, what? What? Dude, Yasuo comes out of nowhere and wind wolves the old, wind wolves it. Well, we're spoiling I mean, a bit here. Are we, are we spoiling? Uh, no, you, you said it. We're vague. Right we're vague. I mean, let, let's let's we'll assume that not everyone has witnessed the cinematic masterpiece that is Arcane. Go watch it. Uh, hashtag sellout. Um, great show. <laughs> actually, unironically. <laughs> actually, actually, yeah. you made a rap about it. <laughs> we did. We did a rap battle. We did a Vi versus Jinx. Although Some to be banger. fair, I had to pick second, so I would have also picked Jinx. Very. You're team Jinx. I, I'm technically team Vi. I have to stick to I'm my team guns. Team Vi too. I'm team you know, this is great. Who doesn't okay, love a matter. cupcake? Love me anyway, some cupcakes. here we are. Two and a half no thousand gold game, lead. Though. No cupcakes in this game. Still a powder though. Still a powder. And a powder keg. Comp popping off, ready to blow up. And SK probably sweating, because as good as Sirtus was doing in that lane phase, 0-0-1 remains the score line. On the opposite side, Larson, yes, he may have dropped, but four assists to his name. 80% kill participation, a part of every one of these team plays. and. SK, early game, you said it earlier, it was clean, it felt like very methodical in some of those early game plays, but now it feels like it's falling apart a little bit. Gilly has spent a lot of time hovering around the mid lane here. TP going to be used from the side of Rogue and ready for an all-out brawl for that third oh, yeah. Drake. SK, Jesu Flash is up very soon. He will need to wait for that before SK kick the fight off because he needs to peel for himself in this kind of comp. Four divers on his team. He needs to make sure he flashes the Ornold, gets away from Rakan, and then make, uses his ult to follow up from what SK throw at comp. But comp is the defining factor of this team fight. If he can stay alive, it's over for SK. If he falls, it's over for Rogue. He has flash up three items. Lord Dominic's picked up now as well. Dragon has spawned. SK have the river for now, but Larson's in a good spot to put some pressure on top of them. SK need to flush Larson out here because if they get flanked from him, Jezu is going to find it very hard to walk up in that choke. Go to Wemley has a great position too. Struggle is Treese committing the ultimate feels like the only safe bet or Larson leaping into Surtus, but he's learned in the laning phase that is definitely not an option. Oof. 
Rogue having to walk through the pinch there is going to be difficult, though. Have to be careful. Have to respect the potential wombo combo. But a blast cone means Malran can't sneak his way over the wall. Larson leaping away. That's the fear pull down gone. And that's the sign to kick things off. Three members now locked, locked up. Larson leaping into the pit. Gilius incredibly low. Going to get taken down by Larson. Genix just trying to find a kill on the LeBlanc, but he can just dash right back. Chains connect anyway. Rogue are eviscerating SK in the team fight. But now, Jezu's looking to fire back. Steel oh, on the dragon comes through. You do not mess with the Jin when it comes to objectives. They learned it in the LCK, and we're going to have to learn it in the LEC. There it is for Jezu. Oh, Henna stole it as well in the series today against T1. Stole the Baron with the four shot, but Jezu does the same thing here as well. As good as it looks and as great as it is to deny this Mountain Soul point, let's look at the rest of what happened. Rogues on Baron, they're gonna get Nash. Four members of SK died for just Rakan. Trimby did fall. Jezu still has Flash here. If he can steal this Baron as well with a Jin W, then honor Jin, but he has Vision on it. If he, no, there's no way, right? Miracle no worker. Okay. No. That one, okay. Malrang not gonna let that one happen. That is Baron secured, now a 6,000 gold lead for Rogue. Was not the most dominant early game, but a dominant mid game, certainly nice to see from this Rogue lineup. They are uh, set up for success in this one. And just look at this Ornold, SK are so separated. Look at the two carries at the back and look at the three divers at the front. Where is the damage for SK? Comp is free hitting, treats dies. Larson takes down Gilius. Genax is all alone. And Jezu and Surtos are fending for themselves. There's no really one direction that SK was following there. But we get the T-Tors, we get the camera angle, we get the bullet that takes down Trimby and then the bullet that takes down the dragon as well. Jezu from range. Gets a little bit of a consolation prize for SK, but still now barrened up Rogue. Siege ready to go. Genax and Gilius caught out. And with a replay like that, at least it's a pretty consolation prize. Gilius, though, set to fall now. Sertus backing away. Here the comes rocket. the Orn ultimate. Sertus locked up. Larson just going to chase him down. No passive means no CC. Goes golden, can't use the personal space, but will not have the opportunity to do it. Rogue not respecting the personal space as they will barrel down the mid lane and look to break open the inhibitor one. And Dracos, I'll be completely honest. I've spoken to this about a few pro players in, in what was my career a couple of years ago. At the start <laughs> of every spring split in the LEC or in major regions overall, because roster swaps have come in, because you've had very little scrim time, because the meta is very hard to read, scaling and teamfight is always the safest bet. Scaling, teamfight, or comps that are very easy to execute. I feel like SK's comp is quite difficult to execute. Maybe it worked in scrims, but on a competitive game at the start of a brand new year with a brand new roster, I think one-dimensional comps like Rogues, pure team fight, protect the Jinx, are just so much easier to execute. Certainly are, but Odawamine might be in trouble now. No, comp is simply too strong, ladies and gentlemen. That is a Gigafed Jinx and a Gigafed Rogue. 50k to 40k as this fight continues. Rogue just looking to break open the base and end the game. Sertos Gen X treats Jezu still standing. Could look to hold onto this one, but there goes the rocket. Sertus now walking away, the shield coming in for the personal space. One more auto will not finish the job. SK oh, on the Jinx, retreat Jinx, again, Jinx. being routed. And there are the resets. Will they dive the fountain to give this man a few more kills? It looks like the answer is no as Rogue retreat, empower the minions, and look for a slow, steady end. Sertus, what can you do? He can nothing. do absolutely nothing. He's outranged. She's too he strong. the Nexus left. That's it. Gilius won't find anyone. Oh, he got... Oh, do I have name? The creeps are backing fun. away. No. We've had to sweat both times today, Cadrill, for a finish. But at the end of the day, early game, relatively close overall. Mid game, Rogue coming online. Fantastic team play. Excellent team fighting. Oduwamne blowing the Orn Horn at the perfect moment, time and time again. And Maorang, pretty impressive first game as well, all alongside Hyper Carry Comp. I think if you're a Rogue fan and you wanted to build some faith in this roster, this is certainly a picture perfect game. Yeah, great start from Rogue, great start from Matt Lyons as well, the first two games of the LEC. Massive shout out to Comp on his debut on this Rogue roster. We know Marang, we know what he's capable of, but Comp's had his up and downs throughout his career. Now he's a staple starter on this LEC lineup. He was on Vitality. The only real mistake he made was in the early game, not flashing that Nautilus hook. From that point onwards, fantastic. I mean, a perfect game, you have something to look back and review at, otherwise, relatively flawless. I've sucked up all the farm, found kills in the fights. At the end of the day, players of the game, you're going to see them on the bottom of your screen right now. I think it's pretty obvious who you need to vote for. Yeah. But I'm not going to tell you who, because there's actually three pretty good choices. Actually, Odo Amney. Odo Amney is my vote. Tank, weak side, sponge, engage. He did his job fantastically. Kadril, at the end of the day, I just need to know. Are you what shilling you know? for Ender 
when you go for that Kia player of the game. I know if I open up Twitter and there's Sweeting Auto Amne is the MVP of the game, Kia. Yeah. Kato, yeah. I want from you, if you can, expectations for SK after a game like that. What do they do to come back? I think the thing is with scrims and the start of pro play, I was just talking about it before the end of the game, scaling and teamfight always is the name of the game for brand new rosters, brand new meta. So I'm hoping they go back to something that's a little bit more simple to execute. Certainly. But as we go, you guys need to check out our song of the week, Move Your Body. It is an absolute banger, Own Boss and Sevic. Check it out. We're going to be back with game three right after this. Jammer. Systems are overloading. We can't risk another game. We need to take a break and regroup. We're starting to lose our mind. Captain, we cannot go back to Elo Helm. Last time it took us months to get out of it. Initiate break protocol. Hurry up! Uh, yes! Uh, yes! Uh, I did it! I, we did it! We did it! Even the biggest champ needs a break. <laughs>
and welcome back to Berlin for the opening day of the LEC 2022 Rogue. Start this season with AW and joining me for this interview, I have the boomer of the LEC back on Orange Duty, Odo Amno. How are you, Odo? Uh, I'm great. I'm really happy to be back uh, in the studio, at least on a big screen behind you. So Yay. that uh, that is something. But uh, <laughs> jokes aside, I mean, it's great to be back. Um, off season is boring when there's no LEC. So uh, yeah, I mean, everything's great so far. Well, it's great to have you back as well. There's been a lot of change within the Rogue lineup during the off season with Hans and Inspired to being shift to NA, uh, having Comp and Malron <laughs> joining in. Tell me about this change and what it means for Rogue as a lineup. Um, I mean, obviously, it's a big change, at least from fan perspective, because, uh -huh. yeah, you have, like, the two big names with, like, Hans and Inspire going away and with Comp and Maran coming in. So I get that there's, like, a lot of shock value to this. But uh, overall, for at least the environment, it's been uh, a great change so far. Um, we're getting along quite well, and I feel like... Uh, also, Chris's addition to the coaching staff is a huge benefit to the team. Nice. And I mean, I think overall for the split, is a lot of people will be surprised because uh, we're getting brushed off a lot. Because uh, yeah, I mean, when you when you get rid of like Hansen inspired, uh, it's kind of hard to find replacements that kind of like uh, match their like you know name or like skill or value. So everyone's gonna someone's gonna be upset no matter what. But uh, overall, things are alright. All right, well, what can we expect from this Rogue lineup uh, in terms of style? Because obviously two members leaving, uh, there has to bring some change to the table. What do you want Rogue to be uh, when we look at you playing on stage? Um, I want Rogue to be dynamic and mm -hmm. be able to play multiple styles because I feel like last year we were kind of stuck in the same style where we were just kind of playing for scaling and level six junglers and kind of putting all the eggs in Inspire Basket. But uh, now with Maran coming in, I feel like uh, we have more flexibility in the sense that um, we're not kind of like stuck in that, in that uh, uh, same style that we mm -hmm. always had for the whole year. So now I feel like with time, or at least I hope that with time we can uh, have the flexibility that I wish we could, we, we could have had last year. Uh, let's stay on the Mal Rong topic because there's been a lot of discussion within the community about him stepping in, his English maybe not being the best at first, but I know that Rogue is giving him English lessons. So how has it been working with him? And also, did he bring some of the Damwon Kia magic also to Rogue? Um, I mean, for Korean standards, having worked with Nuclear Che and Ryu in the past, mm -hmm. I think his English is at a pretty good level. Um, it's... It's advancing quite fast. Like I didn't really expect it to be at the level that it is already. I would have I expected the much worse things, I guess. <laughs> but so far, I mean, yeah, Rogue is kind of just dumping English lessons on him. So poor guy is not really having fun. Like he's actually he's oh, no. uh, actually asking me for uh, for help with his homework and stuff. So it's kind of cute. But um, yeah, I mean, he's improving. His English is at a decent level. Like we can understand each other. He's understanding most of the things that we say. Uh, there's not really. I mean, there is a language barrier, obviously, yeah. but the fact that our that uh, our new coach Chris is also Korean uh, helps a lot for him to uh, integrate and pick up things. And also, yeah, I mean, he brings insight from his dumb one days and kind of the style that LCK had. So overall, it's surprising me in a positive way. Well, hopefully we can have him on interview soon enough, given that his uh, English is decent, as you said. Talking about Comp now, he got the Kia player of the game during this game, and I know that people were wondering how Boo. how strong he would be because he took a break and we didn't see him play for a while. Uh, how did it get ready? And tell me about Comp coming back and adapting to Rogue. Uh, I mean, I feel like he was kind of unlucky with what happened in Vitality. I feel yeah. like uh, everything was kind of just burning around him. And it's like that meme where he's just coming to the house and he's like, everything is fine, but in reality is not. So I feel like um, back then what happened wasn't really, really like his fault. Um, it was kind of like a Schalke situation where you kind of have mixed to mix and match every roster move possible to kind of fix the dumpster fire that was happening there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I feel like Community perception might not be the highest for him, given that, yeah, he was kind of unlucky. But so far, he's integrating well, and he's he's a hard worker. He doesn't really have, like, an ego or whatever. So he's doing his best to to get there, you know? And I feel like his performance overall is has got better uh, compared to when we started screaming a couple of uh, weeks ago. 
Oh, that's really nice to hear. Now, focusing more about Rogue, I think it's fair to say that you had a lot of success in 2021. Uh, how strong do you feel about maintaining this performance in 2022? Um, I mean, I think it's quite pointless, or I feel like it gives a skewed perspective on 2022 if we kind of try to match what we did in 2021, because um, the core might stay the same, might have stayed the same, but identity is uh, is different. So right now, I would, I would, the way I think about it, I just kind of want to get the most out of our like our screens and practice and games on stage and kind of trust in the process and in the work that we put in to kind of see at the end of spring split. Um, I mean, results won't lie. We're going to end up where we deserve to end up based on like, you know, our practice because mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of pointless to look on paper on rosters and say, yeah, this roster is going to be good and this roster is going to be bad. Because, for example, last year, G2, 2021 on paper where they were literally super team because every year we seem to have a new super team and blah 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 and they kind of imploded so i feel like everything's up in the air when it comes to the lec and we just kind of have to i don't know do our job i guess that's a really good mindset to have and hopefully you can have the success expected this season Odo, that's all for us on this interview really nice to have you back uh, as i said in the beginning thank you for the interview and good luck tomorrow yeah, great to be in the studio. <laughs> Hopefully we're going to have you screen. guys back soon. Thanks, Odo. And for more on the next game, let's send it over to QuickShot.